Italy were dealing with this virus. Would it affect America? Would it affect us? It became a pandemic, the coronavirus. It was changing every detail of our daily routine. It attacked us without warning. Closing our beaches, restaurants, and schools. It attacked our South Florida community, and then, the rest of our state. Fort Lauderdale, Florida closed their beaches during the height of spring break, an annual ritual for college students. One would have thought a hurricane was coming, but it was a virus and it was traveling fast. It reached our nation at a record speed. The medical industry was desperately seeking answers or a cure. There wasn't one yet. The virus was spreading, but was the threat real? Very real. Um, from what I've seen in the hospital, as well as outside the hospital and, and in clinic, um, coronavirus is definitely something to be taken seriously. It's something that uh, I've seen affect all age ranges. I've had patients in the hospital, even in their 30s, that are, are very sick, and even patients all the way up until uh, in their 90s that are sick. And yeah, nobody was looking for it, so it was definitely something that I've never been exposed to, I've never experienced, especially with a pandemic. We, we didn't think that it would really reach, you know, this far uh, out from where, Ch where it hit in China. <laughs>
are we going to be able to have art exhibitions where people can actually walk through a gallery and look at art um, in a crowded room? Um, how will I sell my art? Uh, one of the things I'm planning to do is beef up my online uh, presence so that um, I have options. You know, my other my other business is always going to be okay, I guess. Um, maybe more and more people will be thinking like I am that they have to beef up their online presence. And so my web design business will grow even more. I've, I've been working from home since before this happened. So I only work part time. I work from home. So it's really been business as usual for me. The virus even affected nonprofit organizations. So because of the COVID-19 crisis, we have converted to helping people in other ways. Canine Assisted Therapy created a brand new program called Teladog. The Teladog program provides virtual pet therapy interactions through the use of different platforms such as FaceTime and Zoom. And that way we are still able to help people one-on-one, -on -one, to help people um, through a variety of mental health issues. Due to the coronavirus, the state of Florida required schools to close, so children were now being homeschooled. Keeping their kids busy and homeschooling was not an easy task for parents or their children. When we were quickly forced into quarantine, we were very uncertain of what exactly was going to happen. And I think it goes to show how remarkable teachers are that we can quickly adapt to overnight creating a whole new platform, a whole new education system so that our students still felt connected to us and were able to continue in the learning environment. So we're actually doing something wonderful for all the seniors that are graduating. Uh, we didn't want them to miss the idea and the feeling of graduation. We didn't want to have them leave and just feel like we forgot about them and, and sorry, COVID ruined your, your 2020 uh, big experience here. Uh, of course, I, we hope that, you know, that this is the worst thing that happens to them in their lives because life is going to be full of challenges, but we did not want to let that um, uh, be what, what started out their early lives. The first coronavirus patient that I saw and witnessed, you know, was somebody in the early 40s and he was fighting for his life. And, and that was when I knew, wow, this is real and this is really scary. But um, it was at that moment that I knew that this, the first wave probably came through in December, maybe November, because we had um, several patients who presented the same way. Um, but we didn't know, and it was very odd how they were going into pulmonary failure. And um, just a coincidence, like, you know, wow, it's rare that we get like all these right in a row. So now looking back, we know that this came through way sooner than, um, than in March or February. What stands out the most to me are the young people. And, and you know, some people are used to seeing young people die, but I'm not. Um, I'm used to people who are ready to die because it's their time. And the one good thing that's come out of this is um, there has been a spotlight on the nursing profession. I think what is most profound to me about this virus is thinking about who you can impact if you come down with COVID-19. I think the hardest part for me is my dad. He's 83 years old and he's in a nursing home in California. And when they first called, there was one case and they were quarantined. They called a week ago, there were five cases and two staff members. They called Monday, there are 12 staff members and 15 patients. I can't talk to him. I don't know if he's okay. It's heartbreaking. Indoor theaters were closed, so drive-in theaters began to flourish again. Under the soft Florida sky, amid the swaying palm trees, the Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival's new drive-in theater is born. The cars kept coming. It was a fun evening for everyone, and an escape for many. So 
because of the virus, we are not. We're trying to sell our place, um, but our building is shut down to any realtors or anybody wanting to come look at our apartment. So that's also how the virus has affected us. My office is closed right right now. It's only open to people that work here that need to go in to get something or get some copies made or whatever they need, but not for doing business. But we are doing business virtually. We're doing closings virtually. We're doing house, showing houses virtually. People are actually buying houses from all over the place by looking at them online. Exercise clubs closed and people had to find other ways to exercise. I have been impacted by COVID-19 since March 17th of 2020. My studio is closed down. I am expected to pay business rent. Right now, I am trying to be industrious. I am doing virtual online classes in private setting for um, my clients that were pre-existing. Okay, so prior to the COVID, we used to go to the gym maybe three or four times a week, four times a week. Uh, since then, obviously, with the gym closed, we're not able to do that. And uh, they're talking about it opening now. And there, our concern is that, um, you know, what kind of risk would we be taking? What kind of issues would there be? So we're looking forward to at least get into the gym and at least see if it's still we feel safe doing it or is it something we may want to put off and just continue the routine the way we have it now. So I used to be a very uh, dedicated runner. My knees are not up to it at this stage. So um, during the virus, this would be actually the ideal time, um, but I'm not running the way I used to. Uh, I'm, I'm a marathon runner, um, but now I've kind of converted to a bicycle and I went out and bought what I consider an expensive bike to do a lot more exercise on the bike just to get out of the house. Unfortunately, I'm spending more time working on the bike than I am riding the bike, but that's okay because it's time well spent. And I think the most important thing is to spend time doing something and being somewhat productive, both physically as well as mentally. The sports world also changed in an instant. Parks and playgrounds were closing too. The COVID virus has affected the sports world. Uh, I'm a huge Seattle Seahawks fan. Uh, getting ready for the NFL to kick off. Uh, it sounds like there will be uh, minimal to no fans in the stands, which will be odd. I miss going on an airplane to Philly. It was, uh, one of the Eagles games. Being with all the bunch of you know people you don't know, hugging people you don't know, and just being, I don't know, just that, that family atmosphere out there. I miss that. But how was the underwater world? I can say that the dive industry has been hit very hard by the impacts of quarantine. Uh, not only has the industry shut down entirely because they're non-essential workers for, uh, for the, from March, April into uh, May, so that's three months now, um, that's a huge loss of revenue for these businesses. Not all travel was restricted, but airports looked like ghost towns, with only an occasional traveler passing through. I'm flying to Connecticut tomorrow. I'm not concerned as, mo as, as a lot of people are because first of all, the traffic is light. There's not that many people flying. Everyone's taking precautions now. You have to have a mask on before you go in. I'm taking wipes to wipe down my area. So I don't see a problem. I think it's better than us driving up there and having to stay in a motel. Gas stations were open, but gas prices dropped fast as there were fewer drivers on the road. The next thing we knew, we were quarantined. The best thing to do was stay home. You can stay home from the virus, period. Don't go anywhere to stay home. Watch movies all day or whatever you want to do, like art, stuff, whatever. So it's get something interest for yourself and do it and that's the way how i'm doing with my life well my pastime during the coronavirus initially was to get myself organized and i started with the closets and then started and drawers and that got boring very quickly so then from that point i started to contact friends and have more texting and facetime and sending messages back and forth and 
doing reading and trying to get into some of the shows on Netflix and Amazon Prime that we always heard about and never watched. So we're getting all those benefits now. Just had my baby three months ago, so um, I mean, it's basically we were already in quarantine technically anyways, you know, because we weren't able to leave the home. So now it's just kind of a little more of that. Um, our family really hasn't been able to come visit us, so that's how it's affected us. Yeah, we've, uh, we've had him at home this entire time, uh, given that no one can go out and everything's closed. So that's been a unique experience, but it's been good at the same time because we get to spend a lot of extra time with them that normally we wouldn't have that opportunity to do. Yeah, it's definitely a blessing in disguise being able to spend all the time with him. So we, we've been have some long distance friends that we do get together occasionally with and down in South Florida, we get together in person and we always want to uh, phone call in a friend of ours or, or, or FaceTime and we always forget or something always happens. And since the coronavirus, we seem to have, have found Zoom and now we see each other's faces and we're able to, to, to see facial expressions, see that we've all aged a few years. Um, but it's all good. And so we can actually see the personality and, and we can turn our computers around and kind of see what's going on in their households and uh, spouses and loved ones come into the picture and say hi. And that's kind of neat too. I'm a medical professor. I'm an MD. And I believe more in science than I do in politics. And so I believe that unless we open up in a the correct fashion, and I believe we should open up. But I'm waiting for the spike. If the spike comes, then I'm going to pop it down again. As far as the future goes, I think the coronavirus is going to be with us for a long, long time, and I think we haven't seen the worst of it yet. And that concerns me because I think a lot of people would like to think that we have. So I'm very concerned. The results of this and during this pandemic, it's not really about you and me, it's about really um, you know, the, the, almost the, the layers of family and, and the, the people that we have, you know, whether we have an elderly parent that's in a, in a home or has a distressed condition that we have to worry about, or a small child even. I mean, before we really knew that it affected children, and now it, it can affect children. We've got a pandemic, so we here. We've had a space shuttle launch, riots, um, an election, and supposedly an active hurricane season. We're seeing that the, the divers are just really excited to get back into the water and they want to go diving. It's, you know, it's, it's a stress reliever. It's wonderful to be out in nature and everything that has been going on has really created a lot of anxiety that scuba diving releases. So it's a wonderful experience. We've had amazing conditions this dive season so, so far. I don't know if it's because people haven't been out and they haven't been polluting, but I haven't seen the water this blue and clear in probably three years. So much beauty surrounds us, it is difficult to imagine how this invisible killer is affecting our lives. But during every pandemic, including this one, the sun still rises and the moon still shines. As you watch this, we may still be experiencing the coronavirus, this viper virus. Hopefully there will be a cure, or maybe it will already be over, but remember, be positive, live your life, be safe and be happy.